Here are the 10 biggest mysteries that I would love Bayonetta 3 to solve. How are we going today everyone? My name is Rakan. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. So let's start off with Bazillion's World. Aliens. Aliens! Though I have not unlocked this yet, the Bazillions carry a secretive context. They've been said to have been created by an unknown super civilization. Powered by an energy source known as Bazillionium, it's able to break down one's molecular structure. They also have the power to open a portal to another dimension. We still don't know what this unknown super civilization is or what worlds they go to. What we do know is that this civilization is most likely a type 3 or beyond civilization, which is a civilization that uses the energy of a galaxy as opposed to its planet or star. Just a fun fact, we've been regarded as a type 0.7 civilization, not even one. Bazillion is colloquially known as a very large number some even coining it to be a fictitious number. It's a reference to Zillion, an animated series sponsored by Sega and the retro game Zillion, though my best guess is that these guns hold no lore content within them, and that's what they are references, or even a fictitious cover-up story by Radan. However, Platinum Games is more than welcome to prove me wrong if they do want to put interdimensional travel in the next upcoming sequels. Until then, it remains a mystery of who or where they come from. John in those 520 years prior to Bayonetta 1. We've talked about this before in our John vs Bayonetta video, but I wanted to put it in this list. It's a huge thing that John is such a fan favorite, even with very little screen time, which shows how impactful her sassy, no filter personality is. I feel if John was given more screen time about her absence in those 520 years before the game, it'd likely make us appreciate her more than she already is. Everything from her attitude to the way she fights would be explained. Since she did grow up in this period with a survivalistic mindset, did she have a bad relationship with Madama Styx at first? Did she initially fight Balder before she was brainwashed? Was there someone else that she had met and had adventures with who we might get to see in Bayonetta 3? Someone who she befriended before she reunited with Bayonetta in the first game. There are endless stories to bring within that 520 years of Bayonetta being buried and sealed. I feel it would end the saga of the eyes of the world too, since there would be no hole left uncovered. What I would love to see though is who John's parents are and what she did to survive while Bayonetta was in her slumber. Who is Eggman? I've already shown many times on who I think Eggman is, but it still has been a long-term mystery. Over 12 years, in fact. Was it really an impulse decision by Platinum Games? And we already know that Eggman was not a reference to Sonic's Dr. Eggman. To summarize, we only know that even Radan regarded him as a ruthless being, to the point of Inferno not even wanting him. My personal theory is that Eggman was a pure human, who basically ran an underground black market of angel and demon artifacts. He knows the trinity of realities and aims to profit off it. Kind Kind of like running a mafia that essentially keeps the economy of a city going. Eggman's strength came from his insane bloodlust which led him to doing a myriad of underground dirty activities that made him a hated public figure, as Enzo said. Why I think he was a corrupt businessman is because Enzo really wanted him dead, to the point of even calling Bayonetta. If you want to find out how Bayonetta was able to beat Eggman the Destroyer, you can click this link above. A little fanfic for Eggman that I'd like to add is before he became known as the Destroyer, his late wife was a modern Umbran witch, who he was forced to kill or else she would have been persecuted. These persecutors would have been the followers of Aesir. This would have sparked his vow to avenge her, and possibly why he couldn't beat Bayonetta. He heard about Aesir's demise, but now seeks revenge against Bayonetta and eventually Paradiso and Inferno. Anyways, that is beside the point. That is a huge alternate universe fanfic for y'all, but ultimately I theorize he's escaped Inferno and is back as the purple figure who is out slaughtering Bayonetta's around the multiverse. But again, it still remains a question of who the first being introduced in the Bayonetta series is. Also, when you like and subscribe to this channel, I will be live streaming every day this weekend. So if you want to join us for some Scarlet Nexus and Verse me in Bayonetta 2 Tag Climax, make sure to check out the pinned comment. See you there! Radan's past. In episode 50 verse 2, I put a little bit of my fanfic in there with Radan being an adopted son of Ada, the first Lumen Sage, voiced by Zach Elliott. In that fanfic, I showed Ada who was a blacksmith that had Radan under his wing, which is why Radan has a thing for creating weapons. Rodan, boy, run! Ade was also shown to have used the death grip, which Radan is seen during the fights against him. May you be the one to inherit this grip to create and destroy Rodan. Let me know if you like the idea of Radan being raised by the first Lumen Sage before he was sent to Paradiso to govern a portion of it. About Radan's canon past, we've only been told that he was a ruler of Paradiso that achieved the rank of Father Radan, potentially being stronger than Father Boulder. Then there's the fork in the road. 
the rumors. It is said he turned his back against the heavens and fought an insurgency against Paradiso. Upon ultimately losing the battle, he was exiled to Inferno. However, there are others that say the rulers of Paradiso feared his power and ensnared him in a trap that led him to his exile. We still don't know which one is true. Personally, I believe being banished from Paradiso to Inferno is the best way since it allegorizes the story of Lucifer the fallen angel. I hope Bayonetta 3 will show us some amazing cinematics of Radan, since like John, we've been waiting for over 12 years for lore. Let's see if Bayonetta 3 can do it. Cereza's Unknown Voice Actress As mentioned in our Iceberg video in the commentary for Bayonetta Bloody Fate, it was revealed that the English voice actress for Little Cereza in the game is unknown even to developers. When attempting to rehire the cast from the game for Bloody Fate, they had no way of finding Little Cereza. All that was known is that she was a 7 year old child when she recorded, and that she would have been too old to reprise her role anyway. Therefore, Joy was hired as the new Little Cereza. Ultimately, it is possible that there is a woman, grown up, that was initially the voice of Little Cereza still out there. It is unknown whether or not they will reveal themselves in the future. Bayonetta's True Potential It was teased by John in their second fight, and it was also teased by Rosa during her death. What is Bayonetta's true potential? Was it already shown in the fights with Jibelius and Esir? They didn't specifically say when or what her true potential is, but there have been some guesses of her unlocking her Lumen Sage powers from her dad's side, and or that she wields the eyes of the world together. I think having her use her Lumen Sage powers canonically for the last fight against whoever the antagonist is would be a lovely closure to the Eyes of the World saga, similar to Peter Quill unlocking his father's planetary power but then losing them after the Ego arc. This would be the same for Bayonetta as the last moments of the game would have her lose her powers altogether, slowing revealing her older skin. However, she'd possibly be saved by someone, let's say Eggman, after the fight together against the antagonist. This would be his redemption for his dead wife, ending the trilogy here. Oh my god, that is so sad, but it's so cool at the same time. Again, fanfic only. Then you have the classic let's dance boys towards the end of the game. Anyways, back to the mystery, her true potential would likely be an in-game mechanic as well. So you can use those bullshit oh, yeah. boulder moves to win again and again online with very little skill. Skill. Anyways, again, whatever it is, I just hope they'll finally tell us more information about it in Bayonetta 3. Ed and Edna this is easily one of the most adorable things that I'd love to see in Bayonetta 3. In Bayonetta 1, Enzo mentioned that his kids baked a birthday cake for him. If there are going to be some time skips for the third installment, what if his kids are essentially grown up? Or maybe just little children who love it when Auntie Bayonetta and Auntie John come over. We also have to know about Enzo's wife, who I really believe is a beautiful, lovely woman, who actually hates Enzo but still loves him for sticking to his family. I think seeing Enzo's household after running away from the enemy after the prologue would give a lot of Avengers Age of Ultron vibes when they visited Clint's house. I would think that Enzo would have a similar house since he actually is a family man that is possibly funded by Radan and Bayonetta. Enzo has a lot of stories that can be branched off since he is connected to a lot of underground networks, and it's one of the cool subplots that I'd like Bayonetta to have in handy. Ursa Flying Object one of the biggest and newest finds of the Bayonetta lore in 2020 for over 11 years, the moon that Balder destroyed had a mysterious object within it. This was found by Bayonetta veteran Ursir, uploading on Twitter a 3D model that we theorized to be an Umbran destroyer, Umbran generator, or Umbran spaceship. A Twitter user by the name of Love Rain had asked Mr. Kamiya a question. If that object in the moon was significant, to which he replied with it being later revealed in future Bayonetta games. Coined the Ursa flying object, it is still unknown to what this object really is. Luca's Demon in the Eyes of Bayonetta 2 art book, there is a description near Luca's glasses that indicate that Radan had sealed a demon inside of them. On top of the fact that Luca's scar above his left eye is the same looking scar in the Bayonetta 3 teaser, it could mean that the demon has now taken over Luca's body and is now the purple figure. However, there have been hints and even debates to Bayonetta 2 not even being canon, and with some theories talking about Bayonetta 3 continuing on from Bayonetta 1 or merging the timelines together. So of course, this is just the theory. Again, it could be just a cosmetic feature that that is not connected to the lore, but it's interesting to know that there might have been a demon spying on us this entire time. Her name is Love. Just like in our Bayonetta iceberg, I really enjoyed this monologue, so here we go. The gravestone in the beginning of Bayonetta 1 had this engraving, as has been one of my biggest questions ever since I played Bayonetta. It's still unknown to whom this gravestone is referring to, a future character that we haven't met yet the next antagonist of Bayonetta 3, or maybe even nothing at all. What really drew me to it being canon is that it talks about the first and second, which really reminded me of the first and second Armageddon. This could be a hint to where Bayonetta 3 is going, that was there since the very start. Whoever this is, I just hope 
were on her good side. Bayonetta in those 20 years prior to Bayonetta 1. Before the events of Bayonetta 1, it was revealed by Enzo that Bayonetta had awakened from her slumber for 20 years. Essentially, my whole life. So what was she up to? I had the theory that Radan named her Bayonetta with the intent of making her into a demon bayonet. However, Bayonetta saw this as her most cherished moment being regarded and recognized for who she was as an individual. She was so used to being an outcast and being discriminated against. Eventually, this feeling would have led her to having her signature mole. Of course, that is just a theory, but imagine how the interaction could have been. How she met Enzo, his family, Radan, his bar, rumors of another Umbran witch, anything. Like John, was there anyone interesting that she met along the way that will appear in Bayonetta 3, who they forgot in those 20 years? Other than the serious shonen things, imagine all the adorable time skip anecdotes that they can put in. Bayonetta experiencing cleaner food, mobile phones, technology, even if her clan already had Iron Man suits. But I think it'd be an adorable feature to see some cinematic flashbacks of Bayonetta being a 20 year old reacting to the city of New York, and even trains. As opposed to being a 40 year old in present time, I still love her. And finally, the biggest question of all time, even bigger than Bayonetta 3 itself, is... That was quick. Did you get everything? <sighs> Forgot the caviar. Why did John forget the caviar? Tell me below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button and share this video around. It would mean the world to me. I'm Rockin' and happy theorizing.